Hello everyone and welcome back to Computer Vision Lecture Series. This is Lecture 6, Part 2. Uh, we will continue from uh, where we left off last uh, uh, last part. Uh, what we, are we, we were talking about camera calibration basically and in that direction we saw uh, some definitions of what uh, transforms mean, how it is a global uh, transform. We also saw uh, different ways of fitting lines, basically linear least squares and total least squares. We saw two different methods uh, of solving um, ax equals to b and equal ax equals to zero um, kind of optimization problems. And um, in this lecture, uh, in this part of the lecture, uh, we are going to see how we can uh, use this um, optimization techniques uh, in context of our uh, uh, for recovering camera uh, camera parameters or uh, um, yeah, basically recovering camera parameters. So a little recap before we go ahead is we saw these two different uh, common optimization problems. The first one is of the form ax equals to b linear list squares. And the solution to this is given by um, a composite uh, closed form uh, solution here where x equals to a transpose a, we take a pseudo inverse of a, a transpose b. Uh, there is a direct uh, command in MATLAB available for the same. Uh, we also talked about how the A is um, is not a, it, it could be a singular matrix or its dimension is not fixed and therefore we always have to take a pseudo inverse um, and therefore a trivial solution does not exist. Uh, essentially this is a problem where we um, minimize this um, uh, two norm of AX minus B. Uh, another problem statement that we saw is of the form uh, ax equals to 0. Um, it has a constraint where x transpose x equals to 1 and therefore uh, essentially what we do is uh, we minimize this uh, this term here. And uh, the solution is a simple eigen uh, eigenvalue decomposition of a transpose a where we take the minimum um, uh, eigenvalue and its corresponding eigenvector that is uh, the final solution for um, this kind of problems. Um, now we are going to see how we can apply this uh, methods in um, uh, recovering camera parameters. Um, these two methods both of them are part of li uh, are called global uh, optimization in the terms of linear least squares. Um, so total uh, least squares as well as linear least squares they form this global optimization methods. The good things is that they are easy to implement, easy to un understand also and optimization is quite straightforward. Uh, you just have two equations to solve and that's it. There are clearly specified objectives. Basically you have the point points given to you from the real world as well as image plane and all you would have to do is compute the um, uh, solution through the given equations. The bad things is that let's say if you have a point uh, which is an outlier which does not uh, fall in the in the cluster then its weight gets uh, calculated and it affects uh, the final uh, solution and, and there is no way of getting rid of that weight because um, uh, this is a direct uh, method and uh, in this method all the points are considered um, at, at, uh, at one moment. So there might be bad matches, there might be some extra points like those outliers which might um, uh, disturb our uh, final solution, uh, distort our final solution. Uh, it does not therefore gives us a good fit and it's not possible to get multiple fits either so you're 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 left with only one solution and it's not possible to improve it however in there are iterate, iterative solutions are always better and there um, there are there is one method explained in uh, Sizileski reference book so if you are interested in you can just check it out just read once and you will understand how it works uh, what it does basically iterative methods uh, uh, we can find uh, or have memory of these uh, distances of these all points and we can get rid of the outliers and therefore uh, come up with a better optimized uh, solution and therefore um, iterative solutions are always uh, better. Okay, so how do we uh, recover camera geometry through um, these two coordinate systems that we have? Um, from the world coordinates as well as the camera coordinates. Uh, how do we recover the camera parameters through this um, geometry? So here you are seeing uh, an image of an ima um, a room where um, 
in red you can see the world coordinates in three dimensional uh, x y and z directions whereas uh, green is a um, camera coordinates or your image coordinates or the um, uh, coordinates of the points uh, of the image that you capture um, how do we recover here how do we play out um, things here so what we do is uh, we select an, a scene or a um, of, of whose geometry we already have information about right so here you see across the room there are these uh, squares being spread around and they are uh, basically what they are features right so uh, think for a uh, few seconds um, what can you do with these points if you know the 3d locations of these points can you uh, recover camera parameters or not give it a few moments and imagine or remember what we have learned so far we have learned feature matching it is possible that you can use um, templates and match certain uh, because you already know these uh, special points so you can use a template matching uh, features uh, feature detector and you can find exact locations of these features in your 2d image and in 3d um, uh, world coordinates you already know their uh, locations and you can form a relationship and then compute and solve the optimization problem to recover the camera parameters right that's one method another is um, i want i want more instead of matching uh, instead of having fixed this kind of uh, special shapes or something i want uh, a bit more robust method so what you can do you can go ahead and find um, feature uh, feature points basically uh, interesting feature points like corners for example because these corners have special uh, characteristics you can categorize them and then you can uh, eliminate them uh, when you do the feature extraction and then you can tell that okay these are the features um, in the image and their correspondence in the world coordinates you can find and then solve this uh, another um, optimization problem and recover camera parameters so what we, we do here mean essentially uh, when you recover camera parameters it's called calibrating the camera okay you fix those values of uh, camera such that um, any future 3d point or image point you can uh, recover from the other so given an image point you can tell where uh, in 3d or in the world coordinates this point will be using the cal uh, calibrated camera and similarly if you have a 3d location of a point in the world coordinates you can tell in at what point in the image this uh, image is uh, located using the calibrated camera so that's the advantage of uh, uh, calibrating the camera so what we do here is use a scene with a known geometry for example this is a smaller setup as compared to the previous one we know the locations of these points and we take an image of uh, this and then compute uh, this uh, m matrix and get a least square solutions so we already know the xyz coordinates of all this uh, reference point uh, we also know the u and v points uh, in the image and all we have to do is uh, find this unknown camera parameters so how do we do this in um, in the t 2d image coordinates we have this points and in 3d world coordinates or locations we have these points their corresponding points how do we do so the first thing we do is um, um, imagine uh, the cam pinhole camera model where the world coordinate is reflected in the image coordinates uh, through a transformation matrix M so uh, this matrix M is considered as a transformation matrix which transforms the 3d locations of the world coordinates um, world uh, locations into image uh, locations and um, essentially it converts the P into P prime under uh, under M so uh, given the 3d p point uh, evidence we have this information we find the p m which minimizes the error between the estimate of p prime as well as uh, the corresponding um, p uh, uh, the original um, uh, locations in uh, the image so p is the original uh, 
locations on the image plane p prime is uh, the one image locations estimated by the transformation matrix uh, applied on the world um, locations and our minimization problem is to find uh, um, uh, or find the minimum distance or min minimize the distance between p prime and p so the best m occurs when p prime equals to p or we get a uh, zero when we subtract them so we form all this equation from all the point evidences that we have from all the points uh, detected by the feature de extractor or feature matching or um, uh, you already know those locations so you use them and form all this equation and solve the model by a closed form regression basically what we have learned until now least squares you can use you can use total least squares as well and we'll see one example here so let's say you have x y and z um, so how this u, uh, u and v relate to x and y and z is uh, under m is given by this uh, we already know what s is so you can write u and v uh, in terms of completely in terms of x and m uh, further ahead we um, convert these equations in such a way that um, we have all the coefficients um, m coefficients are individually stated here on the on one side right so 0 equals to we have all the m uh, co uh, coefficients of m uh, stated in terms of uh, combination of, of x, y, z, uh, u, and v. So we can, uh, once we have these two equations, we can form uh, least squares uh, equation matrix from this. How? This is how you convert that. So using that equation, you can directly write um, ax equals to b form using the um, matrix um, terminology. So x1 into m11 uh, will give you um, uh, u1 so some in in this equation form you can write and we already have seen how to solve this ax equals to b so, uh, uh, minimization problem uh, the uh, solution is m is uh, matlab has a direct solution and um, we can use this um, uh, closed form solution to find the uh, missing matrix m similarly with method 2 uh, we can bring this u uh, and v uh, vector on the left hand side and it will arrive here in the negative form and then it will turn into a method 2 which is the total least squares uh, it's like the homogeneous um, equations, uh, equations that we are solving homogeneous equations uh, have nothing to do with uh, homogeneous coordinates they are two completely different things um, but here we see a x equals to 0 form of uh, uh, optimization problem and therefore we can use the SPD decomposition of this matrix A and accordingly for the from the um, decomposed V uh, matrix we take the last column as the solution vector so here I want to um, grab your attention and point you out that in exercise 2 you used this method uh, of SPD decomposition and you uh, chose the last column of V as your solution matrix so um, that, that method is now reflected here uh, you were using least squares uh, in total least squares actually not linear least squares so again the question comes again um, how do we calibrate the cameras right um, another question would be how many points do you really need to recover the um, camera parameters so do you need one point or, or more so let's see let's say let's see if you are choosing one point how do you uh, when we re substitute these points in the a um, ax equals to 0 solution um, we can find this projection error by these two equations here we have two different equations for m11 and m m12 right and, and we will be able to um, uh, find two values from uh, uh, one point right so uh, do you remember the degrees of freedom that we discussed for the camera matrix this intrinsic parameters have five degrees of freedom and extrinsic parameters have six degrees of freedom um, six degrees have like three is for the translation and three are for rotation and rotation in although there are uh, nine uh, values written here we discussed this before as well um, some of these values are uh, associated with one another uh, so there are only three different uh, degrees of freedom 
so total six degrees of freedom for the extrinsic camera parameter and five for the intrinsic so if we take three um, points we can get um, six different equations to solve uh, or so if we get three points if we get six sets of equation we can find uh, 12 different um, uh, unknowns right uh, but essentially we have only 11 so we only need uh, so m ha m is a three cross four matrix 12 unknowns uh, but if we include the projective scale ambiguity so we have only 11 degrees of freedom and one equation per unknown therefore we have more roughly five and a half uh, point correspondences if we have so we need at least five point five and a half point correspondences to determine the solution so that's all we need to know uh, to find the solution of um, this camera calibration um, because if we have more points then we are just uh, over it's an over determined system and um, it can help us improve uh, the error rate and it will be a bit more robust to the error in the future points so it is better to have more points but uh, the minimum required is around six so let's say if you write the camera uh, calibration matrix as in, in this form where you write m as the transformation matrix uh, xyz as the world coordinates and u and v as the um, image uh, coordinates by using the first method uh, we can convert this into uh, this form and we can find again uh, this is an in inhomogeneous linear system where ax equals to b um, of the form ax equals to b here as, as we see and as we already seen uh, in MATLAB we can just use one um, pseudo inverse of a to find the um, matrix m similarly if we use ax equals to zero form of um, um, optimization uh, uh, formulation of this uh, this problem uh, we can find um, we can decompose the matrix a into s v and d and taking the last column of uh, the v matrix is the solution for uh, the m matrix uh, as we see this is a homogeneous linear system uh, it has nothing to do with homogeneous coordinates as i said before so uh, this is the m matrix and it has 12 unknowns and uh, decomposing it into svd we will be able to get all the 12 values but the question arises um, okay before that question let's see uh, what are the advantages disadvantages over nonlinear methods um, so the advantage is is simple it's straightforward easy to formulate and solve uh, there are uh, closed form solutions available uh, there is no ambiguity in the solution so you can directly choose the, if you know the points you choose the um, uh, the best points and with the minimum error and then uh, you're good to go that's your solution the disadvantage is that it does not give you directly the camera parameters so what we mean is we will get a matrix uh, m of m11 up to m34 but we don't really know from this whether they are which coordinates are translation uh, which ones are rotation or uh, and which one correspond to the focal length or shear or um, the scaling uh, factor right so we don't it's it's not possible to get it directly uh, the camera parameters using the least squares uh, linear methods um, and it also does not um, model radial distortion and we can't impose constraints like uh, if you have if you know so already know some certain um, camera parameters like focal length or uh, camera uh, radial distortions then uh, these methods do not allow you the flexibility to include this information in the calculation so that's a bit of a uh, disadvantage however uh, the one good thing is that it provides a good initial initialization for uh, nonlinear methods. So, um, nonlinear methods uh, are preferred because, as, as I have told you before uh, about the iterative method, uh, in linear methods we can model the uh, the point in a nonlinear form, and you can find the difference between the projected points and measured points, and we can define this error and um, uh, linear methods provide a good initialization in that direction so let's say you compute through linear methods the first uh, solution and that gives you a rough estimation for the initialization for the next uh, step in the iterative method so in nonlinear methods you can then direct you directly use pre, um, a lot of 
so uh, non-linear optimization methods available like Newton's method to get a, an optimal solution. That's the advantage. Um, so, but however, can be if you have if you if you get the matrix M, the camera calibrated uh, calibration matrix, uh, can we factorize back to uh, the intrinsic and the extrinsic uh, matrix? We can do that. There is no directly. Um, we can actually sorry. We can actually solve uh, directly for getting the individual entries of K, R, and T. Uh, it is possible. It's not easy, but um, it's possible. How? Uh, we can use uh, factorization techniques like RQ factorization. Uh, it's different than QR factorization. Uh, RQ factorization factorizes the M matrix into uh, R does not stand for rotation or anything. I represents the right diagonal matrix, where uh, the upper triangular uh, entries of the of this matrix uh, is non-zero, and we already know from um, uh, the camera. Uh, calibration matrix that the upper triangular uh, are the values which are unknowns. So RQ gives a good uh, form of solution where we can uh, recover directly K, the intrinsic parameters of camera uh, of the camera, and Q is an orthogonal basis in R. So we get um, a rotational matrix uh, in the form of Q. And in order to recover T, what we have to do is just um, um, the we, we do an in, we apply an inverse of k and then uh, uh, we just take the last column of this so if you have this ma uh, this matrix and if you apply a inverse of k which you already got from here uh, you will be left with uh, this matrix and the uh, and we already know that the last column is the translation matrix so you can recover t using this technique uh, it's very straightforward and easy and um, and yeah, that's that's it for um, uh, from the perspective of uh, getting back um, K, R, and T um, parameters specifically from the M matrix. Uh, another important thing we can think is how to recover the camera set center. So how do we recover that? So um, uh, we have this uh, matrix here, and this is the uh, form given in the M. Um, Ah, no, sorry. So this is the um, basic equation of the camera um, intrinsic parameters with the extrinsic parameters. Uh, this vector is not the camera center exactly. It is um, it's a translation, right? So um, when you rotate and then translate, that uh, the uh, the camera center is shifted um, at least by minus RC. So this is what it represents here, and so. We already know that this is minus RC. So all we know, all we need is uh, an inverse of R and an inverse of uh, K from here, and then we multiply M4 to get the uh, camera center here. So we are just uh, re uh, going reverse uh, manner. So in order to recover the camera center, uh, we multiply it by mm, minus RC, and then we do. Uh, a multiplication of minus r inverse k inverse and m4 to get the camera center similarly if your uh, camera um, calibration matrix looks like this um, this is uh, basically uh, q here represents k cross r right so we need q inverse m4 because we already have kr so if we do a key inver q inverse we get this and if we have uh, multiplied by m4 we get the c back so this is how you can recover the camera center and this is all about camera calibration uh, for uh, the, for this lecture 6 and in the next lecture we will start studying about stereo vision and then slowly move on towards um, different viewpoints so until now we have seen um, the scene through one viewpoint but uh, what if we have the camera and we see the images in two different viewpoints and can we use this information to recover the camera parameters right uh, this kind of geometry uh, or this kind of uh, uh, method uh, to recover um, uh, camera parameters is called epipolar uh, geometry and there are certain epipolar constraints that we will learn about them uh, that we can use to uh, recover these parameters until then thank you